What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope you are having a great day so far. Hope you had a great weekend. I'm going to tell y'all right now. So, I don't know if I told y'all this before, but this is another juice that I love that y'all really need to go get. This right here. Tropicana Tangerine Lemonade. You have to get this. The best. You see, I done killed the bottle. <laughs> like, I done killed the bottle. Best freaking juice. Um, getting into this episode of GH. Amazing. First of all, this episode was pretty good. Um, my boy Neil is back in action. He's back in town. Um, haven't seen him in a while, so apparently he was out of town for the holidays, visiting his brother, his family. Um, you know, Alexis was happy to see him because you know she she ain't had no dick appointment in a long time, so you know she was happy to see her 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 man. Um, but he didn't seem all that thrilled. I mean, he was happy to see her, but something happened while he was out of town. Which kind of changed things up. So basically, according to Neil, he's in the process of losing his medical license because of Alexis. I said, what the f how? I wonder how. Wait, is it like how is he losing his license because of her is it because he opened up to her like somebody found out like what the freak happened? Like, I really want to know, like, who's responsible for these shenanigans? Because he should not be losing his medical license. I'm just saying. Um, hopefully, though, he worked that out because I would hate to see him lose his career. He's a good doctor. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Sam, of course, had to tell Alexis all about her plan or whatever, just, you know, so that way she could get a better parole officer so her and Jason could see each other or whatever. Um, Alexis, she ain't never gonna like Jason. Let's just, spoiler alert, let's just put that out there. <laughs> She's probably never gonna like him because she keep telling Sam, like, stay away from Jason. Like, you've been saying this shit for 13 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got a child together, so it's a little too late for that. But, um, you know, for the sake of her parole, she was just like, you know, stay away from him. But it's not just Jason that she got to stay away from. I mean, you might as well say that she needs to stay away from half that town. <laughs> but um, anyway, moving on from that. So my boy Spinelli back in town. More than likely, he's back in town, obviously, to help um, Sam out, you know, get the goods on uh, Peter. And of course, you know, he brought little Georgie with him. It was good to see Maxie and Georgie together. You know, I know she missed her daughter a lot. Um, so apparently Spinelli and Ellie, Spinelli, Ellie. Um, I love when you mush their names up. When you say their names fast, that should be fun. So apparently they might be moving back to Port Charles or around Port Charles. Um, what do you say? Queens Point, I think. Um, because she has a job opportunity out there. And if she gets the job, they'll be moving back closer, which I think would be cool. Um, I haven't seen Ellie in years since she left the show. So it would be good. To, hopefully they get the actress back because it would be good to see Ellie again. Um, so basically, Spinelli was asking Maxi what she planned on leaving Crimson. I think she should because Maxi, even she was complaining to Peter that, you know, she basically was putting out fires at the office by herself. Why does she continue to put up with this? Like, that company would not be around today if it was not for Maxie. Let's be real. Maxie should either be editor-in-chief. Maxie needs to just start her own thing. Like, get an investor. Like, you know a lot of rich people? Get somebody to invest. She could easily go to Jason and get an investment from Jason. Jason would easily give her the money. Not just because, you know, of Spinelli, but the simple fact that Jason has known Maxie for years. I mean, hell, she even helped plan his wedding. She even helped plan his engagement um, proposal to Sam. Like, Maxie has been a part of Jason's life for years, so I can't see him turning her down for the money. And it's not like he can't take a financial loss just in case it sucks. But with Maxie running it, I doubt, I'm pretty sure it'd be a hit. You know what I mean? Like, come on now. Good investment. You know, and obviously it wouldn't be mob money. It would be legit money. Jason does have legitimate funds. So she could easily go to him or she could go to Mac. You know, him and Felicia could give her a small investment, a small loan. You know what I'm saying? Or hell, she can go to a bank. 
Either way, she should start her own business. Like, I understand she's staying at Crimson because, one, Crimson is her baby. Like, she's been with Crimson literally since K. Howard started it back in 2007. Also, because she's loyal to Nina and stuff like that, you know, she's very loyal. So, I don't think she wants to feel like she's backstabbing her. I don't think it's backstabbing, though. For me, I feel like it's doing you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're finally stepping up and stepping out on your own, you know, doing your own thing. Instead of letting somebody, you know, work you like a Hebrew slave and they profit. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I feel like. You know, Nina makes all the big bucks being editor in chief. She gets all the credit, even though Nina doesn't need the money. But it's like Nina gets a lot of the credit for things that Maxi has done. And I feel like that's not fair. I remember when Jax was trying to give her credit for the Ava issue. And Maxi was the one who came up with the damn idea. But yet he was trying to praise Nina for it. I was like, see, that was the last straw for me. I said, yeah, Maxi need to bounce. Like, she need to go. Um, You know, so, of course, when Sour Puss Peter come in, you know, that was Spinelli's cue to leave. Because as soon as Peter came up in there, Spinelli was like, oh, I need to get Georgie to the hotel. I was like, exactly. Spinelli don't want to be around him. Sam don't want to be around him because when Sam was talking with Maxie, Maxie was trying to invite Sam to dinner. Sam came, you know, she was like, nope, I got to go pick up the kids. <laughs> they was coming up with hella excuses. Ain't nobody trying to be around no Peter. So now Peter and, um, so now Peter and Maxie are going to Noodle Buddha or whatever that is. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. So Elizabeth wanted to invite Peter out to dinner or whatever and, you know, well, invite him over for dinner. I didn't know Liz could cook. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I get shocked when anybody be trying to cook on this show or even mention dinner and all that. I'm like, I just picture everybody on the show just eating out. Like, God knows I do. Like, I cook, but I eat out, though. Like, I probably eat out probably like three times a week. But um, but I do like to cook though. My favorite is like baked chicken, fried chicken, steak. I love cooking my steak with the good butter on it. I love extra butter on my steak. Um, so, you know, she invited him over for dinner or whatever for you know basically saving Andre and Franco and all that. But you know, Peter, you know, was coming up with a million excuses as to why he didn't want to go. Whatever, like he don't like being the center of attention. Jason was side-eyeing Peter the whole damn time. Like, you know how Jason gives somebody to look. Like, he just give you a blank stare. No, basically, put you on notice that he noticed you. <laughs> basically. Um, so, you know, she wanted Franco to watch some recording or listen to something or whatever that Franco Drew left for him or whatever. But I guess Franco wasn't ready to listen to it or watch it or whatever the case. Um, of course, Jason is still not a fan of Franco, which I don't blame him. You know, he was only doing that for Jake's sake and, you know, Franco wasn't Franco. So he's back to basically hating Franco at this point, which is fine. That's his prerogative. Um, But apparently Jake um, is going to art camp thanks to Jason or whatever. I guess Jason is paying for him to go to art camp, which I think is dope. I didn't even know they had an art camp. Which um, I really didn't even know they had an art camp. To be honest, I didn't even know nothing about that. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. So Michael is on high alert now. You know, he's whining and complaining to Jason. He's on high alert because he feel like Tracy is making her move because she made it known that she felt like Michael was neglecting ELQ. So he thinks that Tracy trying to make a move against him. I can understand why he would think that. I, I get it. Um... Ned felt the same way. He felt like Tracy was trying to make a move to take back control of EOQ um, because she was asking all these questions about EOQ and the balance sheets and all that. And Ned was trying to figure out, like, why are you so interested in EOQ all of a sudden? First of all, if you know Tracy, then you know EOQ is, has been her life all her damn life. Even though she stepped away and left the country, of course, she's still going to know what's going on with EOQ or want to know what's going on with EOQ. Of course she will. EOQ is like another child to her. You know what I'm saying? Probably her favorite child, <laughs> if you really want to compare. Um, so, of course, she's going to want to know what's going on with that company. And she had that little slick smirk on her face, but she made it known. She's not the one coming after EOQ. She was like, but she know damn well somebody is. Somebody else is coming after EOQ. So she's trying to be all cryptic and whatnot. 
Um, that's why she trying to stay in the game, like make sure that ELQ is in capable hands and not, you know, ready for a takeover. You know what I mean? Like, that's why she's trying to make sure Michael is paying attention to everything that's going on. Um, she knows something. She definitely do. She knows something that she ain't trying to tell Ned, um, being all cryptic and whatnot. So anyway, Brooklyn, of course, thinks that she's a smart ass. Um, she changed her name legally from Ashton to Quartermain. That was her brilliant way of trying to get out of her contract with her manager, trying to null and void her contract, because she thinks that if she's a Quartermain instead of Ashton, that gets her out of any legal responsibility she has to him. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. That's not how that works. Sweetie pop, honey bunches of oats. That's not how that works. When you are in a contract, you are obligated. I don't give a damn if you change your last name to Zimbabwe. You're still obligated to that man. So, you you know, it's whatever. Um, even Michael told her. He was like, um, changing your last name does not get you out of your obligations. That's not how that works. I'm like, exactly. She's like a bubblehead. Like, come on now. You should know better than that. Um, she better figure out a way quick to get up out of this because her manager... Is it me? I'm guessing that's her manager, but he kind of looked like Dante a little bit. Her manager. Like, he really did look a little bit like Dante. Like, he resembled him a little bit. Um, he was very, like, handsy with her. Like, he was, like, manhandling her, touching on her butt. I was like, what is wrong with this man? And Dustin, of course, came over to save her, you know, from him or whatever. And come to find out, Dustin and Brooklyn know each other. I said, why am I not surprised that Dustin and Brooklyn know each other? I'm not shocked. So you know this is going to cause conflict even more, not only between Dustin and Lulu, but her and Lulu. Because she already bumped into Lulu, and her and Lulu can't stand each other. So I can imagine what Lulu going to do when she find out that Dustin and Brooklyn know each other. It's like, okay. Shit is about to hit the fan. So anyway... Moving on from that, Anna disappointed me yet again today. Total disappointment. Robert came over there to talk to her about Peter, and of course, she didn't want to hear it. So he was asking her all these questions like, did you find a connection between the gunman and Peter? She lied to Robert and told him, no, she didn't find none. I'm starting to believe that that's probably Alex at this point. Because <laughs> I'm like, is Anna really going to do that to Robert? Sit there and lie to him like that. She, I mean, it. she could. But I'm like, it's, uh, some of her movements seem like an Alex move. Like, I understand you're trying to protect your quote unquote son. Um, but come on now, you're doing too much. And Robert, I'm pretty sure, ain't buying her BS. He not buying it. I could not believe she just sat there and lied in that man's face. And I'm sure Robert ain't buying her bullshit. He probably not. Hopefully he's not, because I wouldn't be buying that for two seconds. Because she was asking him, well, um, what if there's no proof? Because Robert was like, basically, we're going to find proof. We're going to connect Peter to all of this that's been going on with Frank or Andre and all that. She was like, okay, but what happens if there's no proof? He said, well, if there's no proof, there's no case. So, of course, when he leaves, she looks at that file. Please tell me she's not going to try to get rid of that file. But even if she do... Spinelli, now that he's back in town, might be able to recover that file. He might be able to get that because just because you got that file don't mean it's the only thing on record. He could easily dig that shit up. You know, he is a hacker for crying out loud. He could get into those records. And of course, Peter's worried about those records as well because he had that look on his face and he was thinking back to the conversation he had with Anna. He knows that that. You know, those bank statements and all that. He knows that there's a connection that could connect him to the gunman. He knows this. So, of course, he's going to try to cover his tracks. Anna's going to try to cover his tracks. But I doubt they're going to cover them well enough. Somebody's going to find it. And that's your asses. I'm just saying, your ass is grass. Um, so, anyway, I think that's everything in this episode, I want to say. I think that's everything. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.